hi and welcome back to my channel where we're making beautiful things and the thing I'm making this this week is a kit that I got from Shane's Bible Journaling. Now Shane is a lovely lady based here in South Africa and she stocks a whole different range of Bible journaling kits. She's got all the products, she's got everything you could possibly imagine under one roof when it comes to Bible journaling. <laughs> but um, this one that that I'm doing today is based on the scripture Psalm 133 verse 1 which reads behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity and you know this is this is a scripture that is very dear to my heart because I feel so strongly about the Christian community you know living together in unity um, it's something that's always meant a lot to me and it's always been important to me so I am um, started by prepping out my page with some clear gesso and the reason why I prepped it first with clear gesso is on the other side of the page I've got another page that's got all sorts of ink and paints and stuff <laughs> stuff on it so I thought I'd better prep this with clear gesso to prevent any bleed through from the other side so I in, in the kit, she's got these different size paintbrush handles. I've chosen the biggest one, and then I'm using some fun foam to just raise the, the paintbrush handle a little bit because I want it raised slightly off the page. Now, obviously, this does add bulk to your page, so if you don't have a ring-bound Bible, it can start making it, well, even with a ring-bound Bible, my Bible's getting very bulky. <laughs> but um, I wanted it to stand out. Now, with the kit... Shane actually includes a picture of the finished page that she created and a beautiful list of instructions on how to do it. Of course, I didn't follow any of her instructions. I did something totally different, but I loved her page and that's what inspired me to do this page. So once my clear gesso was dry, I went ahead with some white gesso. So again, if you um, are working in a different Bible or you don't want to cover the words, you know, there's different ways that you could do this, but this is my journaling Bible. This is my artwork Bible. It's not my reading or studying Bible. So I've started out with um, my layers of gesso, and now I'm using a paint paintbrush dipped in water. So just water, and what this does is it makes it easier to tear away the image from the napkin that I want. I don't want to cut it, I don't want a hard line, I want a very soft effect and that's why I'm, I'm doing it this way by wetting the napkin and tearing off the different elements. Now you can't really see it but on this na napkin there's also these beautiful light blue like stamp marks which I'm going to tear out as well but unfortunately the camera doesn't really pick them up so well. Now if you've already journaled Psalm 133 one, another um, scripture passage you can use is Ephesians 4 verses 4 to 6 and I just want to read that to you from the message translation for just take a moment and listen it says you were all called to travel on the same road and in the same direction so stay together both outwardly and inwardly you have one master one faith one baptism one God and Father of all, who rules over all, works through all, and is present in all. Everything you are and think and do is permeated with oneness. Isn't that beautiful? So um, I just, I love my message translation. <laughs> So you can see with uh, coming back to my page with the napkin, I'm just playing around a bit with the placing, sort of trying to figure out where I want everything. I really want the effect of these flowers to just be splashed across this whole page. That's kind of what, <laughs> what I'm thinking. So I'm using some ordinary acrylic paints and um, just mixing up the colors to get the shade I want. So remember, I have clear gesso on the page, I have some white gesso on the page, and now I'm going in with some green acrylic paints. And you're going to see I'm just going to spread it across the page 
just to start creating that canvas. And you'll see as I put the paint on, you'll see the texture from the page on the other side starts to show through. And I love that. I love texture. I'm, I'm just, I love my texture. So sticking this down, I can then dry it with my heat tool and then I can go ahead and I can actually just start placing the napkin. Now the thing with the napkin, um, how I like to do it, there's no right or wrong way here. Well, maybe there are some wrong ways, but <laughs> the way I like to do it is I dampen my brush and then dip, dip it in with my brush damp. So it's not sopping wet, but with my brush already damp, I dip it into a clear gesso, paint the clear gesso onto the page, place my napkin and then paint over the napkin again with the same brush that's been dipped in the clear gesso. If the brush starts to feel like it's getting a bit dry, I dip it in my water again. Clean water, not paint water, preferably. So clean water. And um, so that for me is the trick is to have, to be working with a slightly damp brush and not just gesso on its own. So it's almost like my gesso is a little bit watered down, but not very, just a little bit. And I am already loving how this literally looks like these flowers have been splashed across this page, which was kind of the effect I was going for. So you can see I've allowed the napkin to sort of overhang the edges a bit. And only when I'm done and everything's dry will I go back and trim off all the excess pieces. But I do just cut away around my washi tape where my key, key verse is because I want that to stand out. And, you know, I kind of... I actually wrote at the end end of the video, you'll see that I wrote on my page, we are all works of art and we are all artists at work. Because for me, you know, in, in addition to that oneness or that unity is knowing that each one of us is created special. Each one of us is, you know, a, a piece of work, our artwork that God has created and each of us is in everything we do, a creative person, um, you know, my friend um, Surya likes to say, if you got dressed this morning, you're creative. If you chose clothes to put on your body, you're creative. Everybody is creative. So you'll see um, as I get to the end of the page that I'll add that, that sentiment to this. Once my, my flowers and my butterflies were on, I decided that I needed this to be brighter. So I'm using a fluorescent pink acrylic paint and I'm just dabbing it on directly on top of the napkin and you'll see I'm kind of using the placement of the color that's there as my guideline as to where I'm intensifying the colors and I just mix oh this this cute little flower paint palette that I'm using is also from Shane by the way how cute is this little ceramic paint palette and the stem, the green stem of it, is actually a brush holder, so you can rest your brush there. I, I'm so busy using my brush, I don't even rest it anyway, but <laughs> it is actually there to rest your brushes on. But you can see how, as I work, I actually mix my colors in the palette and spread them around, because I'm not going for a, a perfect Rembrandt. I'm going for more of a Picasso, more of a, um, yeah, more of a Picasso <laughs> type of where the color is just splashed on which is kind of the the look I'm going for so I'm mixing my colors and I'm just adding it directly to the napkin to make everything pop and stand out and you'll see when I mix the green to use on the leaves I add something called a acrylic medium and what an acrylic medium is it's basically something that waters down your acrylic without using water you see if you have acrylic paint and you want it to be more fluid and and more like watercolor in consistency if you add water to it you actually the pigment itself you start to lose pigment the pigment starts to break up the more water you add to it the more the pigment breaks up and if you want to keep the intensity of the pigment but have something a little more fluid like a watercolor texture that's when you would use your acrylic medium. So it makes the acrylic paint behave like a watercolor without losing any of the intensity of the actual pigments. So you'll see when I get to the green, you'll see me adding that. But I'm just adding pops of color 
and then obviously I'm going to finish it off with my sentiments. So I hope you all enjoy this. I will um, list all the products that I've used in the description of the video and I hope to see you all back on my channel soon. Bye!